Hey guys, I'm Vanessa from The Girl on the Bike and today we are going to be doing a beautiful custom on the 48 Sportster cutting the cam cover. It's going to give it a really cut back, rugged, aggressive look. Really awesome little custom, pretty simple to do and uh, let's see how it's done. Okay, first off we're going to get the exhaust pipes off. I've given them a soak in some Donnelly 40. Hopefully they're going to come off nice and easily. the oil out so we're uh, going to release these nice and evenly and get the cover off. Right there are a lot of bolts in this cam cover and it's really important we make sure that when we put it back together they go back in the same place so what I've done is made a little cardboard cutout which has the same positioning of the bolts which means I know when I pull them out I can put them in my template and when I come to put it back together, I'll know which bolt's which. Cool. I was hoping that we were going to be able to slide the covers out without having to take the brake push rod linkage. However, we're going to. So, two little bolts at the front and then the circlip and bolt in the middle and we should get them out of our way so we can crack on with the job. There we go, we are inside. A little bit of rag down to pick up any of the residual oil that's still in there. Now we need to remove the hose for the oil and it's got a little clip on it. So I've got a flathead screwdriver and I've just loosened that clip off to enable us to slide the pipe on. There we go. Now, we have our cam cover ready for customization. And what we can see from the setup of how this mounts onto, uh, onto the bike is we've got some dormant areas, which it's really important that we make sure that the gasket seal is retained so that the engine can operate as normal with the customization. But we can see all of this area of material here which actually isn't fundamental to the operating of the bike. And that's the bit we're going to be removing today to give us that really rugged look that we're after. Okay, while we're working on the bike, I want to make sure that there's no opportunity for any dust or dirt to get into the gearing system uh, and the engine. So I've got some standard cling film from the kitchen, nothing special, and I'm just going to put it over the top just to make sure that nothing can get in there while we're working. Now, it's time to get cracking on this guy. Got a 7 16th spanner to remove the oil pipe union. We don't want that getting in the way with the angle grinder. Nice and easy. Next up, we need to start thinking about what we actually want our finished look to uh, to have and the line. So what we've done is we've got everything masked up, done very careful measurements to mark where we're going to cut. I worked out what sort of design I wanted just looking at a whole load of custom bikes online. And then the tactic I've used in order to mark that is using a really clever little right angle ruler which enables you to lock. I've measured from the edge across to the minimum spacing 
on the diameter for the nice clean seal onto the engine and then I've added five mil onto that measurement so that I can then lock that off, flip over to the other side and mark that across, uh, join them up and I've got a nice crisp line. What I'm also going to do is diagonal the edges but first cut, we're gonna just do a nice clean straight line um, and keep it nice and simple. Double checked, you know, measure twice, cut once, and we are now ready to get the angle grinder going. Okay, angle grinding done on the first straight cuts. Quite pleased with that. Really nice, beautiful line and the masking tape has done its job perfectly. Now it's time to mark up the angles that we want on the corners. To get a nice angle on the corner, I'm gonna go as close as I can to, to the shaping. And um, I'm not worried about identical angles or anything. I just want it to be nice and snug ruler across and draw the line and then I'm just going to freehand snip that corner off with the angle grinder. We're then going to do a similar thing on this side uh, where we're going to go sort of five mil over from, from the edge and again snip that corner off to give us a nice angle all the way around. Right, angle grinding is now complete. As you can see I've got a really nice tight angle cross on those two corners. Next up is gonna be a hand file to really smooth those around and get the perfect finish before we go and paint. What we're using at the moment is a nice little metal file and we're just smoothing out the edges. Angle grinders can be quite aggressive and we want a nice, beautiful, rounded, soft finish. sandpaper and we're just going to use that to finish it off to get a beautiful smooth finish. Now this bit is quite a slow process, sanding is very gradual but it's worth it. So I've been prepping it with the wet and dry for probably about half an hour. I've got the water, keeping it nice and wet, and what we're getting is some really beautiful, smooth edges. You can see the finish on that. Once we get the uh, textured black paint on that, it will look absolutely beautiful. So I'm slowly working my way around the edge to make sure all of those lines are nice and smooth. 
Sandpapering is now done and we have some beautiful straight lines. So what we're going to do is get the masking tape off, which was purely on there for protection, and get this cleaned up nice and dry and uh, we can get spray painting. Right. Following all the dirty work, we need to make sure that this thing is spotless before we spray it. So I literally dumped it in the sink hot soapy water and we're going to give it a clean down before we then fully degrease it for uh, spray painting. We've got some brake cleaner, we're just going to spray it, liberate all over and it's going to help get rid of all the grease ready for spraying. applied and what we're using is official Harley Davidson textured black no doubt there is an aftermarket version but I can't be bothered to mess around going straight to the source and getting the good stuff uh, we're gonna give it probably three or four coats following all of the instructions on the tin and it's a beautiful paint to work with it's just drying up now and in a couple of minutes we'll be able to give it a second coat day two our cam case is now beautiful and dry and with the nature of spray painting there's a little bit of overspray that's gone onto the surface where we need the gasket to make a really nice seal. So I've got a really nice sharp uh, razor blade like some sort of Stanley knife or something and I'm just going to gently use it to scrape off all the excess paint and we're going to do this all the way around to make sure that we get a nice seal. Back in the kitchen, giving it a nice, hot, soapy clean so that no crud. I'm applying some multi-purpose grease to my new gasket. Now, basically, this grease is going to help the gasket swell, which is going to give us the seal that we need uh, for the engine. Right, before we get it back on, we're going to pop the oil pipe union back on. We've got a little bit of Loctite to make sure that stays up. And we're gonna just screw it in finger tight and make sure that it's orientated, pointing up for when it's back on. Right, got a little bit of oil to prime this. Now, for the exciting up. part of getting our new chop down case back on. We've got the new gasket oiled and on in place. Now this can be quite tricky sliding this back on. It's a really, really tight tolerance fit. So do not be tempted to start getting a hammer out and trying to bash it on. You've got to be really gentle. It's all about getting the alignment of the mating uh, surfaces. The tip I have is looking at the gap that you've got all the way around and making sure that that is the same and just really gently sort of tap it and slide it on. Once you've found that sweet spot, you'll be able to slide it on pretty effortlessly. Yeah, but it's Remember about sliding the pattern that I need in order that. to torque these to, to the correct load to get a real. From earlier on in the video, I've got my little template so that I can uh, make sure that the exact bolts go in their original home. I then downloaded the 48 Sportsman manual so that I can get the sequence pattern that I need in order to torque these to, to the correct load to get a really nice snug fit. Uh, so I've got my diagram in front of me and I'm now going to tighten these up very gradually. I'm just going to get them all to biting point to start with and I'm going to follow my pattern. Oh, I don't like some kind of jigsaw puzzle. We've got them all pinched tight. Now it's time to get the torque wrench out. And the manual says 10 to 13.2 as far as the Newton meter talk. I'm going to go to 12, somewhere in the middle, sounds about right, and I'm going to continue to follow the pattern and uh, get these tightened up. 
Nice little click, which means they are talked. pipes back on you don't need to watch me do that and uh, then we can see the final look she is back together and it's now the moment to reveal the new chopped cam on my 48 sports there drum roll Woo! <laughs> I'm really really pleased with how it's come out so, as we can see, we've got a really nice, rugged, raw look. We can see the front row sprocket. We've got a really slim profile. It looks absolutely beautiful. I'm pretty chuffed. Now, it's quite an intimidating one to do, but hopefully I've shown how easy it is and it's something completely achievable at home. Get, get out there, have a look at what shapes you like and uh, try it out yourself. I can do it, you can do it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube.